Y'all take your seats. I got a few moments to preach on this morning. The Lord is blessing me right, right now. Luke is the gospel uh, or, or the gospel book that is a historical document. We know Acts to be the historical book of the New Testament. And as Acts is the historical book of the New Testament, so Luke is the historical book of the Gospels. His Gospel is a documentary of who Jesus was. And he documents who Jesus is and was by what Jesus did. Luke in his writings set, set up for us Jesus as the Son of God. It is Luke's opinion as he writes in his Gospel that timing is everything. Somebody say timing. I didn't come for everybody today, but I came for some somebody's. I'm going to help some somebody's. Timing is everything. And, 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 and folk like to put a lot of stock in time. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong. Believers also have a right to, 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 to put some certain scenarios and certain situations in the element of time. What Luke does is he authenticates who Jesus is and was by what Jesus did during certain times of his lifestyle. He authenticates Jesus as being the son of God, not just Joseph, the carpenter's son. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes people will look at you through your occupation and never give you credit for who you really are. <laughs> you don't have to be a white collar job person. You can be just an average Joe. But people often decide and size you up by your occupation. Uh, you know, I, I think that, that, that real meaningful folk often hold meager jobs. Sometimes you have a lot of trouble out of stuck up, educated, sophisticated, know it all folk. Give me a trash collector and a janitor and you, have, you can get along a lot better. They, they, they don't have all these highfalutin thoughts about themselves as it relates to you. Because some people think they're better than you simply by the work that they do on a daily basis. But aren't you glad when Jesus gets ready to pass out crowns, he's not going to look at what you did. He's going to look at why you did whatever it is. Come on here. Some preachers going to be at the back of the line and some ushers and nurses and janitors in the church going to be at the front of the line. Y'all don't want to hear no talk. Because the Bible said he gave every man according to everybody got the same amount of pay. Y'all don't want to hear no talk. So Joseph authenticates Jesus as the son of God even though the folk knew him as Joseph the carpenter's son. Lord have mercy. And they didn't want to believe that Jesus was in fact their Messiah. How could this, how could this humble man working on wood stools and chairs and benches be their Messiah? How could this meager man living in the, the ghetto around the corner down in the part of the town, nobody, how could he possibly, Lord have mercy, be king of the Jews, son of Jehovah. But, but God often brings people, Lord, help me to preach a few moments, out of very meager existence and very, very simple substance. He, he, he has a way to take the underdogs, the, the, the folk that, that dropped out of school, had drug habits, and, 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 and were alcoholics, and, and, and we used to call them in the old church street walkers. Y'all don't know that, 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 that. That's the ladies of the night. And nowadays we got gentlemen of the night too. He has a marvelous way. I don't have a whole lot of time to preach. He has a marvelous way of, of, of taking rejects and, and placing in them the bountiful gifts of God. It, it's this, this carpenter's son, Lord have mercy, that, that was born in a stable amongst animals, wrapped in swaddling clothes, that is actually the son of the most high God. What I also like about Luke's historical account, when he brings Jesus to the forefront of the people and sets him up as God's son, he does it in a very unusual way. 
He does not do that, first of all, by the miracles that Jesus wrought, but he goes a little deeper and takes it back a, take it, takes it back a notch. And if you look at chapter number three, he takes it back to the temptation of Jesus. I'm going to help somebody. He, he takes it back to, to the time when the enemy tempted Jesus. Y'all know this. And when Jesus gave that wonderful decalogue back to him saying that men should not live by bread alone, but by every word, come on, that proceedeth where? From the mouth of God. Then, then Jesus is baptized. He's baptized in the water Jordan, indicating to his public audience that he's beginning a new walk in life. My, my, my. We don't put a lot of stock into baptism today. But when I got saved, baptism was a great grace. It meant that, that, that something had, had taken place on the inside, and you wanted everybody on the outside to know what had taken place on the inside. I got anybody in here happy about baptism? It's not just a ritual. It's not just a doctrine of the church. But baptism means that you're walking now in the newness of life, that actually the Lord Jesus Christ, through the presence of his spirit, is indwelling in your life. We, we act like baptism ain't nothing but just being dumped in some water. No, 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 no. It has a deeper significance. It means that the God of all of heaven, his presence is walking, living inside of me. And we ought to, we ought to have the church house full when people are getting baptized. We, we ought to be here to celebrate those who are joining the ranks. Y'all ain't going to help me preach. Those who are joining the ranks of them that are sanctified. I got any born again baptized believers of the cross in the house tonight. Today. Y'all, y'all sit down. He, he's baptized of, of John and, and John is decreasing that, that he may increase and, and, and then he is tempted of the enemy. He's tempted of the devil. But, but this is the key in Luke's historical account. And I'm almost finished. This is the key. Luke makes, makes it plain that the temptation that Jesus is about to face, it, it, it's because the Holy Spirit is leading and guiding him. Uh, Luke says it this way. He says, the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness. Uh, I got to park here for just a moment. I'm going to get to my points in a minute. Uh, but I got to park here for just a moment. Uh, there are times in every believer's life uh, when what you're going through uh, has been uh, flavored by the hand of the Holy Spirit. Uh, oh, I'm going to help somebody. Uh, every trial, every temptation, uh, every tribulation, persecution, that you go through, even though the devil is the perpetrator, it is all in the design or under the design or the disguise of the hand of God. Tap your neighbor on the shoulder and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I may be going through right now, but God got his hand in it. Yes, yes, yes. Everything bad that happens to you, everything that you've got to struggle through is no indication that you've sinned or done anything wrong. Sometimes God got a blessing for you, but you got to go through something to get it. Oh, I'm going to help somebody who's struggling with the season. Don't you worry about no Christmas gifts. Don't make your budget any larger than you can handle. Jesus is the reason for the season, and he will lead and guide you. I can't get nobody to believe it. The Bible says, y'all sit down, that he was led into the wilderness, led into a dry, desert, barren place by the hand of the Holy Spirit. And so it is that sometimes God will take you where you don't want to go. Lord, have mercy. I said sometimes, I'm talking to somebody in here, the Lord will take you where you don't want to go. Don't feel like being bothered with that. Don't feel like going through that. Not the time or the season so you think uh, for this to happen in my life but you got to understand that the Lord knows where he wants to bring you and he knows that there are certain things you're going to have to encounter in order for him to get you where he wants you to be Lord have mercy 